Hey everyone, welcome back to The Haunted Corner. I'm Ashton, and I am so excited for today's episode. I've been looking forward to this for weeks. When you think of unsinkable women, you may think of Molly Brown, but that's not who we're talking about today. Today, we're discussing Violet Jessup. We recently started training some new employees at work, and we were doing a get to know you activity where my colleague asked, what is something that we can talk about for a long period of time because we're passionate about it? Okay, so I went first, super confident as per usual, and my answer was the Titanic. Yep, obviously, that was my answer. Now everyone else took a little bit of a different route and they were talking about mental health and personal growth and all these amazing things. So when I say that I'm not like the other girls, that's what I mean. But if you know me, you know that I have been fascinated by the Titanic forever. This is my Roman Empire. And Violet Jessup, the woman who we are discussing today, has a connection to the Titanic, as well as a few of her sister ships. So let's get into it. Violet Jessup was born on October 8th of 1887 in Argentina. She was the first of nine children born to Irish immigrants, William and Catherine Jessup. Only six of their children would survive, and from a young age, Violet was tasked with helping to care for her younger siblings. She was proven to be resilient at a very young age when she contracted tuberculosis and was given only a few months to live. She survived despite the diagnosis and grueling recovery. William Jessup, her father, died after experiencing complications from surgery, and that's when her mother decided that the best thing for the children would be to move to England. This was the first time Violet would set sail, but it certainly wouldn't be her last. After arriving in London, Violet was enrolled in a Catholic school. Her mother, Catherine, worked as a stewardess on a royal mail ship to support the large family until she became sick sometime before Violet's 21st birthday. With her mother unable to work to support the family, Violet left school and began applying to work as a stewardess. But she wasn't immediately hired. She was rejected on a few occasions because of her youthful appearance and her age. But after many attempts, her friendly personality and the fact that she spoke English, French, and Spanish helped her land her first job. In 1908, at age 21, Violet received her first onboard assignment sailing on the Royal Mail Line vessel Orinoco, which served the West Indies. This moment changed the trajectory of Violet's life forever. After spending nearly two years on board the Orinoco, Violet was let go from her position. According to some reports, she was wrongfully dismissed. So she began to look for other work and experienced many rejections once again. It was at that point that Violet was forced to apply to liners, particularly the White Star Line that served the North Atlantic. This route was notorious for its rough weather conditions and the kinds of passengers that traveled the route. Because she was so desperate for work, though, Violet accepted a position on board the RMS Majestic. As you may know, the White Star Line was a British shipping line well known for its Olympic-class ships, the Olympic, Titanic, and Britannic, a very unlucky trio of ships which were advertised by the company as unsinkable. Well, after spending some time working aboard the Majestic, Violet took another position, this time on board the RMS Olympic, and this is where Violet's maritime misfortune began. Things started out well aboard the ship. That wasn't until September 20th, 1911, when the Olympic collided with a Navy cruiser called the HMS Hawk. Both ships were heavily damaged, with the Olympic receiving a large tear just below the waterline. But the ship managed to make it back to England for repairs, and fortunately, there were no casualties. This helped the White Star's reputation for their unsinkable ships. 
but the Olympic continued to face issues throughout its time. The crew went on strike because there weren't enough lifeboats on board. That sounds familiar. The ship then ran over a submarine and finally ran into a light ship, killing four members of the crew. So not a super great time for the Olympic. And as it would turn out, her sister ships were just as unlucky. Following the initial collision with the HMS Hawk, Violet Jessup, along with other White Star employees, were surveyed by naval architect Thomas Andrews, who asked them what improvements could be made for the next class of ships. The employees suggested improvements to the stewards' quarters, among other things, and in 1912, Violet, along with several other members of the Olympic crew, joined the crew on the ill-fated Titanic. Violet was one of the 2,240 passengers and crew members on board the Titanic when it left Southampton on April 10, 1912. Four days into its maiden voyage, tragedy struck. At 11.40 p.m., Violet was in her room. Now with her on the ship, she had brought a copy of a translated Hebrew prayer that an old Irish woman had given her. That night, she read the prayer and was settled into her bunk when she heard what she described as a low, rending, crunching, ripping sound. The ship came to a halt, and Violet assumed that whatever was happening was just a drill. Until a fellow steward appeared in her doorway telling her that the ship had struck an iceberg and was taking on water. Violet was ordered up on deck to be an example and model model behavior for the passengers who didn't speak English. She described the events in an interview saying, quote, I was ordered up on deck. Calmly, passengers strolled about. I stood at the bulkhead with the other stewardesses, watching the women cling to their husbands before being put into the lifeboats with their children. Sometime after, a ship's officer ordered us into lifeboat 16, first to show some women it was safe. As the boat was being lowered, the officer called, Here, Miss Jessup, look after this baby. And a bundle was dropped onto my lap. End quote. Less than three hours after the initial collision, Violet, along with the other survivors, watched from lifeboats as the Titanic slipped below the surface of the dark and frigid North Atlantic. Out of the 2,240 passengers and crew members on board, only 706 would survive that night. Violet Jessup was one of them. For the next almost eight hours, the survivors in lifeboat 16 were tossed around by the rough waters waiting to be rescued. Lifeboat 16 was one of the last to be rescued by the RMS Carpathia and taken to New York City. While she was on the ship, Violet reunited the baby she had been caring for with its mother. Describing the moment in an interview, she said, quote, I was still clutching the baby against my hard cork life belt I was wearing when a woman leaped at me and grabbed the baby and rushed off with it. It appeared that she put it down on the deck of the Titanic while she went off to fetch something, and when she came back, the baby was gone. I was too frozen and numb to think it strange that this woman had not stopped to say thank you. End quote. You would think that after surviving two separate collisions on shipping liners, Violet would perhaps consider pursuing another career. But she was not deterred. She knew that she needed to get back out to sea as soon as possible. When World War I broke out, nurses were in high demand, and Violet pursued training to join the Volunteer Aid Detachment of Nurses. She worked in hospitals for a while before taking a position on board the Britannic which by that time had been converted to a hospital ship. On November 21st, 1916, the ship was en route to pick up a group of wounded soldiers when it struck a German naval mine. The crew immediately jumped into action and began deploying the lifeboats. The captain tried his best to save the ship, or at least bring her back to port, And in his effort to do that, he continued to run the engines, which, of course, powered the propellers and kept them turning. This, unfortunately, created a current that pulled the lifeboats in, shredding the boats and killing many of the passengers. Violet was on one of the lifeboats when it, too, was caught in the current, being pulled towards the propellers. Despite all of her time at sea, Violet was unable to swim. 
She jumped out of the lifeboat at the last minute, but was pulled under the water where she struck her head on the keel of the ship and received a deep gash on her leg. The Britannic sank in 55 minutes that day, killing 30 of the 1,066 people on board. Fortunately, Violet was rescued and went, she went on to recover from her injuries. She returned to the sea once again in June of 1920 when she signed again with the Restored Olympic. She continued to work as a stewardess until her retirement in 1950. Her final assignment was on board the RMS Andes, which was a, a mail ship serving South America. After her retirement, she spent her time raising chickens and growing mushrooms in a small cottage in England. She passed away in 1971 from congestive heart failure at age 83. One evening during her retirement, Violet received a call in the middle of the night. When she answered the phone, a voice asked, quote, Is this Violet Jessup, who was a stewardess on the Titanic and brought a baby to the rescue ship? End quote. Violet confirmed that she was, and the caller laughed and said, quote, I was that baby, before hanging up the phone. When asked what kept her going despite the hurdles she faced in life, Violet said, quote, just the will to live and a huge chunk of faith in divine intervention. And that is the story of the incredible life of the unsinkable Violet Jessup. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I loved it. Can't wait to bring you all more Titanic content. <laughs> The sources for today's episode will be listed on the blog post for the episode at www.thehauntedcorner.com. That'll be linked to in the show notes. Check out the other episodes of The Haunted Corner available now wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts with new episodes dropping every week. If you're enjoying the podcast and would like to share your support and get access to bonus content every week, head over to Patreon. You'll have access to the exclusive Patreon-only episodes, early and ad-free access to the regular episodes, plus so much more. Visit patreon.com forward slash The Haunted Corner to join now. Follow us on social media at The Haunted Corner on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. If you're enjoying the podcast, be sure to tell a friend. And if you have a case suggestion or a correction to share, please send it to thehauntedcorner at gmail.com or submit it through the website. Until next time, be kind and take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.